Hi, everybody. Last week was such a great week. We just finished our, uh, our anniversary of the Practical Board Repair School. It's been one year. I can't believe it. Uh, we started last June, and now it's June again, and we just finished up for the week. Um, I want to show you real quick some of this. Uh, we, we started a new idea here, which is to let me see if I can find show you this picture. We started we started a, a board uh, where we would write down uh, what everybody had accomplished and ring the bell as we went through the week. And and it was the first time we've done that. We always knew we, we fixed a lot of stuff, but it was pretty cool to to just kind of see you know how much stuff we got fixed a lot of uh, a lot of uh, tri stars everybody did mini backlight um, uh, a couple people got through their touch ICs and here's my favorite Andy fixed my chair like a boss so that was uh, that was really fun um, and then after that uh, we the entire team has kind of uh, got a got a chance to um, to go on a quick vacation so uh, I, I went to, uh, to New York City just for a day and it was fantastic. I got to, to hang out with my, with my good friend Lewis and we made a video and I just want everyone to know that, uh, that, that Lewis's uh, favorite thing to do seems to be to troll me and, uh, and just to be clear, I'm not his grandmother, like seriously. I'm, I'm not his grandmother and all the people that were like, she's barely 50. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot for that, everybody. So I'm back here at iPad Rehab and I wanted to, uh, it's been touch IC, hell, everybody sending touch ICs, endless line of touch IC jobs. And I was just thinking about something that, um, that kind of came up during the course that I thought I would share with everybody, which is, have you ever, have you ever wondered when you're watching one of these, uh, you know, board repair videos, especially the sort of sped up techno music ones, uh, where it's hard to understand what the guy's really doing. And at the end, they always take the, they take the logic board and they are able to turn it on through some sort of magic tweezer effect. So what is it that they're, that they're shorting together in order to figure out how to turn on the board itself? If you don't have a power button and you don't want to put it back in the frame so let's take a look at that so i've got a bunch of uh uh touch ic jobs that you know we do these board only uh take the board out do the do the touch ic uh change and then we want to test it uh before putting on our new future proof shield on the back that all of our uh all of our touch ic jobs are getting so far so good we haven't gotten any back since we've started doing that um, and uh, we'll, we'll just sort of wait and see. We have uh, heard others that are also doing this out in the field seem to have some good results, um, and it's, it's a little too early to tell if this is sort of the real magic bullet, but you know, it just makes a lot of sense that, that protecting the touch IC area with a metal shield is gonna, is gonna you know, make it more, more robust and, and uh, less likely to succumb to the disease again in the future. So we end up having a stack of boards. You know, here's, a, here's another one that are all lined up. After you do the touch IC job, you need to test this, see, make sure touch is working uh, before you go ahead and put on your future-proof shield and then put it back into the housing. So how do you do that? Uh, here's the, the uh, power flex connector. So it's this connector right up here at the top of the board and presumably if we were to connect a battery uh, to the phone and a screen we could magically use tweezers and figure out what pins to short together and that would make the um, that would make the the screen turn on phone turn on we could swipe so we need to know how to do that so let's take a look at the schematic and see if we can figure this out all right, let's go to screenshot. Let's go to, uh, this is iPhone 6 Plus, so 6 Plus schematic. And we can find our way pretty easily from, from page one uh, to the PowerFlex connector. So J0801, and let's drill down on that. And here we are uh, looking at it. So let's guess, which line do you think is the, uh, which line do you think is the actual uh, power power button, like turn the thing on? 
well, you know, this is this is what board repair is. It's just guessing. You know, you're going to just take some guesses and see what feels good. So let's think, huh, strobe driver to LED warm. No, <laughs> strobe driver to LED cool. That's probably not it. So not those guys. NC, not connected, not it. You know, R cam strobe, rear mic, rear mic, rear mic. And then here's one button to AP application processor, i.e. CPU. Button to CPU, hold key connector. So uh, the iPhones call the hold key power, you know, power button is hold and uh, home button is menu. So hold menu is power and home. So this is gonna be power button. So that's our, that's our guy. So we can just for fun kind of say, well, how does this thing work anyway? And, and just sort of uh, type in, you know, a little bit of that line and just sort of search it out and see where it goes. Uh, all button lines have a diode on it that uh, is there to allow you to walk across your carpeted floor in the winter and then pick up your phone and it will shunt the uh, static electricity from your finger through to ground without uh, destroying your CPU. So that's a nice feature. Um, and then we can see here's this, uh, this uh, button is talking here to the power management uh, unit. And all of these, you know, are ultimately derived from a uh, one of the 1V8 always on kind of rails that is always present in the phone. And if you short that rail to ground, that's the signal uh, to turn the phone on. So normally this line is 1.8. And if you, you know, do anything to short it to ground, i.e. push the button, i.e. use tweezers to short it to ground, then you're going to get the same effect, which is the drop of that signal to zero will tell the phone Ah, somebody pushed the button and it's time to turn on. All right, so let's look at uh, ZXW tool and ZXW tool will kind of uh, help us quickly to figure out which pin are we talking about. So the, uh, the pin here, button to AP hold key, this is our guy, the one that is pin number two. All right, so let's go back and look uh, at our specific example here. And hopefully you guys can see this. So here's a phone. It's got a, it's a board screen. I just connected the battery. I don't have a magic wand to kind of zoom you in down here. So you'll have to just kind of uh, bear with it a little bit. All right, now let's see what happens. If I can maybe show you under the microscope uh, what this looks like. Now it's a little bit of a mismatch from what the schematic says that it should look like. So let's take a look here uh, and see if we can find this, find it. I lost my battery, yikes. All right, so here's the connector. Move it over there. So here's the connector. So this one it actually has one, two, three, four, five, and it's sort of, you know, the, the sixth one is NC, and so that's that, that one up there. This is just ground, so that's a little bit, uh, a little bit different. Usually they're more straightforward than this. But in any event, this guy is our pin. So all we need to do is to touch him and ground. So here's some ground here. So I can just kind of lay my tweezers down like that. And voila, you can see that my screen is lighting up. So here comes my Apple logo. So that's all you have to do. All you have to do is figure out, you know, look at any connector, figure out which, uh, which pin is the yay touch is working which pin is the you know the the one that corresponds to whatever button is that you're interested in shorting to ground and then find a ground use the tweezers touch it to ground and that that's how you figure that stuff out and it's super easy and it makes it uh, a nice way to not uh, to be able to sort of go through lots of boards without having to constantly plug them in. I see a lot of people coming to the course, you know, thinking you have to put everything back in the housing. Nope, you can run your board right here on your on your uh, station while you're trying to troubleshoot. So that's all. I'm not Lewis's grandma. And that's how you start a board right here on your desk. See you next time.